Um, did you tell your colleagues and your faculty that you are now working at OpenAI or did you just leave the building and everyone thinks you're still a faculty here? Well, I still am a faculty at MIT. I just want to make it uh, make a point, just on leave, and very much appear still on the building. So don't tell my colleagues because they might not know. Right? Okay. I am All right. Great. AI. So your secret yeah, of course, is, is with uh, us. Uh, and the, both sides are aware. Yeah, and we're simulcasting this throughout the building. So the 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 two thousand people that are listening to this, it's a secret. Everyone, shh. All right. Okay. So you're the head of preparedness. So um, who feels prepared for life? Who thinks OpenAI is prepared? All right, well, let, let's figure out what preparedness means. And Ramesh, you got a question for, uh, uh, for our distinguished uh, colleague here? And first of all, to have a you know, fellow MIT professor uh, looking at preparedness at OpenAI makes me feel a little bit more, a little more secure that the you know, right people from MIT are, are working on preparedness at, MIT, uh, at, at OpenAI. Um, but also I heard this joke, uh, Alex, that you know, the whole AGI scare was created six months ago so that OpenAI has an excuse to start a, you know, an official computer science theory group uh, at OpenAI, and you're kind of leading it. Is that correct? Uh, no, like, essentially, like, the point is, I'm not sure this scare, I think there is a lot of people who are scared. Some of them, you know, Jan is mentioning the doomers, so there are, like, definitely a spectrum of concerns. I don't think, like, that this is something that like is at the core of like being scared at the core of open AI is about, right? Open AI is about understanding what this technology, uh, like what kind of opportunities technology brings. And in particular, my team preparedness is about thinking, how do we prepare both at the company, but also how we help prepare the world for this technology that will change us, right? Like will change how we live, will change how we work. This will be big changes and just open AI wants to be the force of positive force in this space. So Ramesh, you worked at Apple, Google, Microsoft, and Facebook, which is now Meta. Um, you did what he did, you went on leave. Do you have a question not wearing your academic hat, but wearing your hat of big industry? You tell me every day how, how innovative and entrepreneurial these big bureaucra bureaucracies are. Thank you, thank you, that was so honest. <laughs> <laughs> Um, now, I think it's important for MIT professors to take some time off and, you know, share our wisdom, but also learn the wisdom from this other big tech companies. You don't get companies. paid on Fridays, right? Isn't that part of the deal yeah, that, that that's you're right. supposed to be that's externally right. focused? Exactly. Oh, and that goes for all faculty in case <laughs> you wonder if they're walking around with a cup saying, hey, it's Friday. Yeah, we take, we, you know, we take the piece of MIT and we sprinkle it uh, in all these places. So, um, but again, Alex, just popping up a level, uh, U.S. just announced kind of an AI safety um, task force. Um, so if just walk us through how at the national level, at the big tech level, and at kind of a consumer level, we should be thinking about safety, AI yeah, safety. Sure, so yes, US indeed uh, just recently announced the USA Safety Institute. Uh, so this is a very important initiative that I think I'm really hoping uh, and want to do everything I can to make it successful. But yeah, so first of all, we definitely should think about AI safety. But I want to just make one point that I really think it's not just about safety. Again, that's why we use this word preparedness also, in addition to safety, because it's about just making sure like that we prepare for the changes uh, that come. This means making sure that the downsides that this technology can bring do not happen, but also that the upsides do happen. So I just want to view it as a bit uh, a bit broader lens here. But yes, this is definitely something that requires also attention at the national level, and I'm happy to see that U.S. government is recognizing that. And we need to think about many things. So on one hand, we want to understand this is something that my team in particular focused quite a bit on is understanding, okay, what are the new potential risks, catastrophic risks that increase capability of that the technology brings bring about? And then how do we think about mitigating them? How do we make sure that our decision making about whether we deploy the model or not at OpenAI, or but hopefully also the same process happens in other companies, you know, whether this is uh, whether this is the right decision. But then again, this technology is diffusing everything one way or another. So we, especially government, should think about also 
well, first of all, let's, let's make sure that nothing bad happens, but also like, what does it mean for the labor market? What does it mean for, uh, you know, for all these processes that we are, uh, that we are doing? What this means for cybersecurity and so on and so on. And these are kind of many of this, uh, many of these questions are something that the government is in charge of. So it's, I'm very happy to recognize that, like, that they recognize that this is, this is part of their duty and, you know, they're acting on this. I'm going to ask two related questions. One is this confusion between explainability, reliability, um, auditability, and trustworthiness. I mean, the, the way I explain to people is, you know, if somebody explains to me how a car works, every part of the car, that's explainability. Uh, and then when I start driving the car, you know, I feel uh, it's reliable. At some point, when I see all my friends and I see statistics in consumer reports that people are not dying for driving, then it becomes trustworthy, but at some time things go wrong and then it becomes auditable. So, you know, is there a similar analogy you can give us from the AI point of view of how AI safety is actually made up of all these pieces uh, and, and, and it's careful, you know, we have to be careful about which phrase is used in which, which, uh, which aspect of AI? Yeah, so this is a great question and I really like how you nicely dissect these four words that people sometimes used interchangeably and they definitely shouldn't. I think actually your current uh, analogy works quite well. Uh, the one thing that I just would want to like, I think the key difference in the cutting edge AI right now is that, well, I think if you have a bit of an engineering background, you will be able with enough time to understand how the car works, that like how there is a combustion and it is it is changed to some force that moves the wheels and so on. So you will really understand what's happening. I think the level of complexity of the existing, uh, this large language models is completely escaping our cognitive abilities. So the kind of, there's a bit of a false promise of uh, explainability because yes, at some point you will know exactly like how the model works. Like here is a number and here's a number and it gets added up and then you are applying really operation. So yes, so at this microscopic level, you will understand, but it's much, much harder in some sense really, to some extent you could think might be even impossible or at least like greatly constrained if you really can understand what's actually happening here. And this actually ties to much of my work, which showed that the way AI solves problems, the way the models, like AI models solve problems, tends to be very different to us. So even if it tends to solve the task that we, we solve, like let's say recognizing something in the images, the way they approach the task is very different. And this, this means that kind of in the context of explainability, sometimes there are explanatory methods that seem to give us a feeling as we know why the model did something, but actually it's only misleading because like the actual reasons are different, but there's just some explanation for our consumption. So, but still the analogy works and I re definitely would like to, uh, in particular, highlight also the trust, uh, the trustworthiness aspect is yes? because, okay, we need to, first of all, define what reliability means. And in, uh, depending on that, you can, you know, AI is reliable right now, or maybe it's not reliable right now. And we can think where do you want to get there? But at some point we will need to face the question of trustworthiness. So, and uh, meaning, so like, Alex, let, me, let me jump in with a question. With using AI in our life. And then, you know, and then the, the question also will be a kind of, okay, auditability is a part of building trustworthiness. So Alex, to what extent are you an X factor uh, for your, your team? Or is there group thinking and everyone thinks alike? And are you creating a roadmap for, for your kind of the charge that you're given? Or are you just kind of sharing some things that people aren't thinking about. And, and I know you, you probably can't get into too many details here, but I'm just curious as this new company at, a, at this time when, you know, people are having to figure things out that maybe hadn't had to be thought of uh, with AI before, how are you approaching it? What can you share? Yeah, so, it's, so, so that's a great question. So first of all, definitely we are developing very exciting technology. Like I'm saying always often that like the privilege of being at OpenAI is that you can see into the future but you can see for half a year or maybe at most a year into the future, right? So we also, there are surprises for all, all of us, but the company cares a lot about understanding what's happening, both from the scientific level, but also from this safety preparedness level. Now, you mentioned something important, the group thing. And like in my team, which is kind of in particular things about all the unwanted, undesirable consequences of AI. This is something that I kind of make it very clear to every everyone on the team is that my biggest fear is exactly the groupthink because there's a lot of groupthink uh, uh, even in the community because people tend to talk to each other and they agree what the risks are. And like to me in particular, like I think 
there will be something negative, something catastrophic that AI will will do in the future. And, by, and I hope and I'm working hard to make sure this doesn't happen. It probably will be not the things that we are afraid of. It will be something completely different that we are not thinking about because we are have not yet dug enough in understanding of the all the uh, subtleties and possibilities that, that AI brings up. So I always kind of drill it in my team just saying, look, our most important things, we have some specific risk categories in something called preparedness framework, where we list kind of, okay, these are the things that we worry about, like cyber security, we, we worry about bio risks and other things, but we have also explicitly this process of unknown unknowns and we are striving in different ways to make sure that we always change our thinking and see, okay, is there something we don't have there? You know, will we succeed? I hope we will, but at the very least, this is something that I'm very, very worried about and trying to work hard to make sure that exactly like, let's think outside of the box, let's not make assumptions if we don't have to, and always kind of be doubtful. Like I always told uh, to my team is that when we make some assessment, uh, actually, what I'm the most worried about or kind of where we should really feel the biggest responsibility is not where we find something troublesome, but when we actually don't find something troublesome. Kind of like we need to always try to second guess ourselves. Did we miss something? Is there something that we are not seeing that we should be seeing? So anyway, but that's a... So, ex so that's I a very ask you about a roadmap. Are you charged tonight, with creating a roadmap? It's part culture, part technology to get there. Alex, are you charged? I know when Ramesh was at Apple, he helped create a privacy roadmap. Are you charged with creating some sort of roadmap or are you just there to to think great thoughts? Well, uh, I definitely am a believer. I'm always aspiring to thinking uh, great thoughts, but I really believe that these things, like avoiding groupthink and so on, like you need some processes and frameworks to actually drive the right, the right thinking and making sure people, like, Thinking about safety in particular is part of people's routine. Like that's something not just you do from time to time, but actually is part of like, even if you are working on uh, on developing better model, you are thinking about that. So to this extent, like one of the things that I uh, kind of was part of uh, impetus to create is something called preparedness framework, which is actually public, you can read it, which exactly outlines how do we think about assessing this catastrophic risk? What kind of technical work we do? How do we, uh, how do we also, and this is very important, how do we have a governance piece that helps feed this technical knowledge into our decision-making about which model we are deploying, which model we are developing and so on. So this is something that I, I, I thought is, uh, is extremely important. I also do try to have a roadmap because you know preparedness is about not only about things that are happening right now, but what is coming, what we should be preparing for. So I do have that, but yeah, I'm will not. I, I I'm not sharing that. Yeah. So, uh, so Alex, to, uh, you know, Alex, uh, to, we, for uh, time, I want to just jump in here. So this is what I'd like, I want to tell you that later today, we have Sean, uh, Sean on stage. He graduated from MIT five years ago. He said his favorite class was yours. He's a course six. And he just left OpenAI after being there for three week, three years, uh, like, uh, uh, like three weeks ago. And he's going to tell us about what it was like um, and I'll ask him about you and see if see if he still likes you. Um, but um, Ramesh, for the final question, I still like him. Yeah. Okay. All right. So so Ramesh, for the final question, can you ask him three questions and let's see which one he wants to answer. And then um, I'm curious to wrap this up. How are you using AI? How much of your software you're using are you using AI to code? Um, like what 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 are, what do you do? you know, with, with, with AI to kind of um, experiment and, and get feedback on, on this technology today. But Ramesh, go, three questions. Um, so, so Alex, I mean, you're a computer scientist just like me, so it's more than just policy and, and frameworks and roadmap. You know, some of your recent work here at MIT talked about, you know, the failure of the models comes mainly from domain shifts uh, in the data, and you have done a lot of work on where pre-training could help, where fine-tuning could help, how does that dovetail with what's going on, thinking about you know, AI risks in general, because kind of model fill is just a tiny piece of it. That's kind of one question. The second question, and John, you would like to also hear this, everybody here, that OpenAI talks about preparedness, not in terms of risk mitigation, but risk creation. It's a very specific word that OpenAI is using. They're preparing for risk creation tools, how to avoid risk creation, not risk itself. So I want to kind of get your thoughts on that. Uh, and the third one is what John asked, like how does this, how does this play out you know, for tools in AI in general? So you don't have to answer okay, all so, those, just pick one. Sure. Or uh, none. So, so let me try to actually like uh, answer all of them uh, very quickly. 
So first of all, I do use AI, not really for coding because I don't do much coding anymore, but I do it for all this knowing things like about like, okay, there's a, there was a word I had in mind and what is this word? Or essentially like there is a PDF I want to parse uh, in like uh, a chat GPT helps me with that. So I really use it and it's interesting how much it's a part of my routine right now. I don't even notice it anymore. So I had to think for a moment to answer that. In terms of my background as computer scientist, I think this is really important. Uh, not that maybe specific research I did is like immediately directly applicable to the setting which we are, which we are but like both the thinking, the kind of structural thinking uh, about this technology helps, but also like, to be honest, having, being, comfortable to have a very technical conversation with someone and kind of really understanding the underpinnings of technology and the, and because of that the corresponding risk like that's key and that's i think hopefully something that i positive that i can bring uh, bring to this mission now in terms of i actually I'm not sure what you're referring to in terms of risk creation so i will have to guess again in some sense the thing about when we think about the negative potential negative impacts of AI, which by the way, I think there's lots of positive ones, but let's talk about negative because we want to make sure that we modulate and mitigate this. Like, I think AI is really a reagent. It's just kind of an accelerant of certain already known risks. I think also there will be new risks, but in some sense, there will be also the old risks that are accelerated. So this is kind of what we are trying to understand. Like if we think about this accelerant of AI, like which kind of makes everything different, like how we want to really understand like how the risk landscape changes as a result of this. So, so this means that you really need to understand. And I, I really like always pitch like uh, my team that's saying, yes, you have this great mission, important mission, but also you will need to get extremely familiar with the absolute cutting edge of the technology that OpenAI uh, is developing. So you are really kind of side side with the people developing this, understanding what they are doing, because you need to understand how AI impacts things. And for that, you have to, 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 to have the deep understanding of that, and then you will know what are the new risks that emerge. So hopefully this so, answers So Ramesh question. has one final question to the audience. Are you underwhelmed with, by Alex? Raise your hand. About what you expected, or you really, really like what he had to say, and you're glad he's working on preparedness? OK. So Alex, I don't know if you can see, but a lot of people are happy about you. Yeah. I, so I, I want to kind of uh, channel uh, Shantanam Bhattacharya, who's a you know, uh, scientist in our group. And he calls it kind of the Soviet model. And any centralization you know, eventually creates you know, potential for catastrophic failure. And the way our society works is through decentralization. And his, his point is that if you just decentralize, things automatically become stable. They automatically become you know, they're cross-checking their references, and things reach an equilibrium. Do, do you have this debate? And I know your group and my group at MIT both work on decentralization. Uh, but at OpenAI, which is a highly centralized organization, do you think decentralization will be a way to bring some stability? So I think this is an excellent question, and I, I think it's quite uh, quite uh, nuanced because on one hand, current to make progress on current AI, you need to have a lot of compute and a lot of focus, and that brings sensitization. But yeah, there are these challenges that you are talking about. So this is, by the way, why OpenAI has such a unique structure. It's because this is a part of a thinking. Okay, like if we succeed, yes, if we create this this great technology. What then, right? Like, does it mean we are all powerful? Should we be all powerful? Probably not, right? So there's a lot of thinking about that at OpenAI exactly. It's just saying like, yes, there is some centralization that is needed to get the resources to really build the technology, but this question that you, that you are raising and the, your post are rising are very valid and definitely something we are thinking about. Uh, and again, our structure is one way of trying to address it. Uh, probably we should uh, think more because you know it's a, it's a very difficult problem. Alex, five stars. If you were an Uber driver, yep. good job. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Alex. All right. Who knows? Thank